welcome to Entrepreneur India. Today we have Hero Enterprise Chairman and Serenipity Art Foundation Patron, uh, Founder Patron Mr. Sunil Kant Munjal with us. Welcome Mr. Munjal. Thank you. Uh, so Mr. Munjal, I would like to start with how and why did you start Serenipity Art Foundation? You know, we are hmm. quite lucky that as okay. a nation we have one of the richest cultural heritages in the world. Hmm. But what's sad is a lot of it is actually going away. It's dying or declining and does not appear to have enough patronage. For us to, to not be doing more was something that, that I felt was not fair, it was not right. So actually I didn't start from here. I, we started this 20 years ago, we set up a similar organization in Ludhiana called the Dhyana Sanskritic Samadam, which was only for the performing arts. Mm -hmm. And that is still continuing. It has done over 100 performances of every kind of uh, performance art form. When we moved here in Delhi, many of our friends used to say, you know, why do you do all this in Ludhiana? Why, no, why not here in Delhi? Yeah. So my own feeling was there's plenty of opportunities in Delhi. But when we looked around, we found there was wonderful initiatives going on mm -hmm. individually in each art form. Mm -hmm. But there was not one which looked at the collective arts together. So that was one of the reasons of, of setting up the Serendipity Arts Foundation, is to figure out a way to encourage the arts as the art forms used to be in India, uh, the pre-British time. And, and uh, that we felt would be a useful thing alongside encouraging uh, and propagating the arts. The festival is obviously a very public event, so it gets talked about, it gets advertised, it gets publicized uh, because the footfall runs into uh, lakhs every year. Uh, the number of artists which come in are very large. Even just in the one performing arts, uh, we have over 2,000 artists coming in and 10% of them come from overseas. Um, so, and this festival has grown both in size, scale and quality year on year every year. If I think back from where we started on 2016 and where we are today, it's been a long distance in a short time. Uh, we have become one of the major supporters and promoters of performance arts. It's a relatively new art form or relatively new art form getting attention worldwide. So first in the US, then a little bit in Japan and Korea. And uh, the Serendipity Arts Foundation is now considered one of the big champions of performance arts. We have provided, we have built a festival where not only is everybody welcome, but everybody is also included. Mm -hmm. So we have, for example, wheelchair access uh, mm -hmm. to all venues of the festival. We have sign language experts for deaf and mute visitors. Mm -hmm. And even for visually challenged and blind visitors, we have braille catalogs and uh, tactile maquettes of important pieces which you can touch and feel. And for all of them, we have curated walks every day of the festival. This year, well, uh, last year, because it was in December, mm -hmm. uh, in December this time, we also organized a uh, special program for people with learning disabilities and mental challenges. So the idea is to continue to expand the scope of people who can come in. We encourage the young, we work in many, many schools, we invite school children every day, we also invite street children from streets, we also go to some of the orphanages to invite children from there, and we also invite the elderly so that everybody becomes a part of this. Uh, it's all inclusive. It is, yes. Okay. So Goa is a unique place. Mm -hmm. It has a culture which is very inclusive, exactly like the festival that we're talking about. Goa is also one of the few cities in the country which has the ability to house a large uh, event. Any large event needs uh, lots of place for people to travel, to stay, uh, facilities to run, run an event like this. And also Goa has the last 10 or 15 years has become the home to many artists, creative people, authors, artists, and, and you know, poets, many of them have gone and settled there. The other places where you could possibly do it is the big cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, etc. Uh, while they're all equipped, but we felt that we should first try and set up in a place where when people go, they either go to relax or on a holiday or will specially come and stay at the festival. And, and we were fortunate, that's how it, it worked out. 
and Goa has now uh, embraced this festival as, as its own. Mm -hmm. So we get many pe messages from people from Goa asking, you know, when is the next one? What are you going to do? Uh, because the quality of the festival is completely world class. It, it's like an international festival taking place. Uh, because we do use some of the top minds in India as curators. We have 14 curators who work on this festival. In addition to that, we have always have between 5 and 10 special projects by other uh, high quality artists. So this is an interesting question you ask because we don't often think about the long term impact of something like this. Mm -hmm. So we had a study done, an impact study done a couple of years ago and the result was actually quite profound as to the impact it's having on people and economic activity in and around that place. So many people said, my kid who had no interest now wants to do arts or crafts or music in his or her school. And we know that many of the artists who came there got encouraged to set up other training schools uh, we know that the economic activity in and around uh, Goa at that time when the festival takes place is dramatically heightened. Obviously because of the kind of footfall uh, that we have, which runs into lakhs, many visitors come, visitors, so the hotels do well, the flights do well, the taxis do well, the restaurants do well, the shops do well, so it benefits everybody. So it's, uh, it's like a win-win for everybody. So. Uh, we have been wonderfully supported by the government and the government machinery uh, of the state and I think that is why uh, we are also getting these uh, messages and calls from other states to bring this uh, to them and uh, the long term impact I guess would only be known in the long term because we are only four years old mm -hmm. but the signs are very clear that it will have an impact on people's personality, their ethos, their interests uh, and their ability to, to adopt the arts as very much a part of their lives and or also their professions. So this was one of the reasons actually when we were starting up, setting up the foundation, we felt that many of the rich traditions and cultures uh, which have been around in India and South Asia for centuries, they're now declining and just going away because exactly as you said, it's not remunerative. People cannot make a living only on that. So we actually tried some experiments to see if we could help some of them contemporize their skills. Using the same skill, make products with design, colors, materials, which are usable by people around us today, which people would buy and use in their homes and their offices, a place to place of work. And we thought that was a, that would be both an innovative, creative and a practical thing to do. And in the very first uh, version of the festival in 2016, we had uh, Manju Nirula, who is the Secretary of the World Crafts, Crafts Council, and she's very actively involved, of course, in the Crafts Council of India. And Dr. Jodhinder Jain, who is the, probably the finest mind in crafts and, and, and the creativity that India has produced. <coughs> Both of them went around, met with uh, such uh, artisans, including in Varanasi, since you mentioned Varanasi. Uh, and also went to Adivasis and the other rural areas where a lot of these skills lie. And helped them create new works, which when they were set up at the, at the festival, People just couldn't believe what amazing things it, that Indian artisans can actually produce. Uh, in fact, people first objected. They said, oh, this is not handmade. Or they said, oh, this is not Indian. And, and uh, so fortunately, we had both the curators. And in many cases, the actual uh, artisans who had done the work. So we said, here's the artisan. We talked to him or to her. And here's the curator who's designed this. And uh, it, it was a sense of, of joy it gives you when you see. Uh, and, an objective being made of this nature, which is both creative and socially useful. But yeah. not enough is being done in this area. It's a very important question you're raising. Mm -hmm. I think India needs to focus much, 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 much more than we have done. And I'm saying it many times uh, only for this reason, because not a lot of people realize 
that the number of people engaged in this exactly. profession mm-hmm. runs anywhere from 100 to 200 million mm-hmm. which is by the way the larger than any other industry that we have in this country and the awareness and focus of this of policy makers of governments of regulators seems to be very low uh, it's seen as something esoteric something you know nice to talk about but i'm not sure we've done enough to encourage more uh, of these to grow so that instead of leaving these professions not only people stay on uh, but more get engaged because this is the true strength of india and india soft power like the video then don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to entrepreneur india hit the bell icon to get notified for more such videos